This is a video on circulatory receptors and circulatory reflexes. These are mechanisms in which the body can regulate its blood pressure. And we'll mainly be talking about the baroreceptor <clears throat> reflex, but also some others that help regulate blood pressure. Now, in general, when you have a receptor and a reflex, you're getting a signal from the body, for instance, in the carotid sinus, that signal will go to the central nervous system, which will then output another signal back to the body to some effector organ. That could be the heart, that could be the blood vessels, it could also be the kidney. So we'll see a kind of loop like this for many of the receptors that we'll talk about. First, let's talk about the baroreceptor. Baroreceptor responds to blood pressure. If you have increased blood pressure, for instance, you'll activate stretch receptors in blood vessels. These stretch receptors will then send a signal to the central nervous system, which will respond with a signal through autonomic efferents. Those autonomic efferents can then affect your blood pressure, um, and if your blood pressure was originally high, you can affect your blood pressure to decrease it in response to hypertension. The origins are where the whole signal starts, so where are you getting this detection of high blood pressure to begin with? There are two big sites that are worth knowing. There's the aortic arch wall, which sends efferents through the vagus nerve and then through the tractus solitarius in the medulla. The carotid sinus is the one that's depicted in this diagram. This is located just above the carotid bifurcation in the internal carotid. So if we look at this image here, you can see the common carotid. You work your way up, it splits, this is the bifurcation here, into the external carotid and the internal carotid. So in the internal carotid, right above the bifurcation, is the carotid sinuses. These, when they're stretched, send signals through small herring's nerves that then send signals through the glossopharyngeal nerve and then to the tractus solitarius, also in the medulla. The reflexes are what happens after you've gotten that signal into the brain. So you can respond to high blood pressure, you can respond to low blood pressure. Let's talk about high blood pressure, or sorry, let's talk about low blood pressure first. That's the first on the list. In response to low blood pressure, you're gonna activate alpha-1 receptors and beta-1 receptors. Alpha-1 receptors mainly do vasoconstriction. This happens in both arteries and veins. In the arteries, va vasoconstriction increases your systemic vascular resistance, which increases your blood pressure. And in the veins, vasoconstriction causes increased blood return to the heart. So you'll have more preload going back to the heart and that'll also increase your blood pressure. Beta-1 receptors increase cardiac activity. They can impact heart rate, so they'll hit the, uh, the pacemaker cells. They'll also impact cardiac contractility, the myocardium itself. So increase cardiac activity, cardiac output, and blood pressure that way. Now in response to high blood pressure, you're going to inhibit these vasoconstrictions. So you're kind of doing the opposite, and it makes sense because you have the opposite problem. You have high blood pressure, you want to inhibit vasoconstriction center in the medulla. This will decrease peripheral resistance, again the opposite of what we saw here. This was an increase in systemic vascular resistance, this is a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. You can also have activation of parasympathetic muscarinic receptors. These directly decrease heart rate and mildly decrease cardiac contractility, which, like the opposite of beta-1 receptors, will decrease cardiac output. So that was all the baso, sorry, that was all the baroreceptors. Now let's talk about some other reflexes that are worth knowing. There's the abdominal compression reflex. This is when baroreceptors can increase cardiac output and cause constriction of abdominal muscle vascular pools that increase venous return to the heart. There's the atrial volume reflex. This is in response to increased atrial stretch. So those upper chambers of the heart, when they stretch too much, your body responds by doing three things. It'll dilate the afferent arterial going to the kidney. It'll decrease antidiuretic hormone secretion from the hypothalamus, and it'll increase atrial natriuretic hormone. Those three things all have similar effects. They all increase the loss of fluid via the kidneys, which then decreases your blood pressure. So increased atrial stretch, your body thinks it's because you have high blood pressure. In response, you're gonna end up peeing out a lot more fluid and decreasing your blood pressure in response. Next is the Bainbridge reflex, also called the atrial heart control reflex. Also in response to atrial stretch, you'll have sympathetic stimulation and increased heart rate and contractility. Next is the benzold jarish reflex. This is stimulation of chemoreceptors and mechanoreceptors in the left ventricle, which then triggers parasympathetic response, which can cause hypotension, bradycardia, and coronary artery dilation. The chemoreceptor reflex is pretty well known. This is a response to low blood pressure and many other factors. It could be in response to low partial oxygen pressure, low, or sorry, increased hydrogen ion concentration, increased carbon dioxide. 
these hit receptors in the carotid body and in the aortic body that then go through the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerves going through the vasomotor centers and they respond by increasing your respiratory drive, increasing your parasympathetic activity, and increasing your sympathetic activity if hypoxia is prolonged. So this is kind of like an oxygen sensor. Uh, hydrogen sensor is kind of relevant as well because as you stop breathing and don't ventilate well, your hydrogen ions go up, your pH ends up going down, and if you're not ventilating well, your carbon dioxide accumulates as well. So this is the receptor that happens, uh, that, that, is, that is triggered when you're not breathing, when you're not ventilating well. And that's why it makes sense that the response is to increase your respiratory drive, increase your sympathetic activity if you have hypoxia. Next is the central nervous system ischemic response. This is the one that leads to Cushing's reflex, which you might have heard about. In response to increased carbon dioxide levels, you'll have increased sympathetic output. Now what caused that increased carbon dioxide levels? Usually it's brain ischemia, but it could be other things as well. In any case, you'll have increased sympathetic output, which then increases your vasoconstrictor and cardiac function, just like we saw with the beta-1 and alpha-1 receptors here. Now if ischemia is caused by increased intracranial pressure, um, that'll lead to sym sympathetic stimulation, which leads to arterial baroreceptors and a reflexive decrease and heart rate. So this is how you end up getting Cushing's reflex, where you have high intracranial pressure, high blood pressure, but a decreased heart rate. It's a reflexive decrease in your heart rate in response to the arterial baroreceptors um, being stretched out. Next is the oculocardiac reflex. This is increased ocular pressure, which stretches the stretch receptors inside the eye, and then through the ciliary nerve, then through the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, and then the trigeminal nerve to the trigeminal ganglion, you'll eventually reach the vagus nerve, which increases your parasympathetic stimulation and decreases your heart rate in response. This one's important for anesthesiology for, uh, for opto procedures, where you'll have increased ocular pressure. Um, if a surgeon is working on the eye, you might see a drop in heart rate. That's it for circulatory receptors and reflexes. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.